That looks way too easy to replace. That would make Apple very upset if they saw yeah. it. Hey, welcome back, you Linux-loving miscreants. How are we doing? Ready for another week of Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. I'm Vin. That's Jill. we got a bunch of fun <laughs> stuff to talk about. We were just chatting in the pre-show. You can always watch us live over here on Twitch. We're just doing the thing, man, just hanging out. I like to hang out before the show and after the show just to get to know everybody. If you want that, pop into our Discord, however you want to roll with it. But we got to talk about the Ladybird announcement. We got uh, distroless, distros, yeah. crazy stuff. And of course, the <laughs> Futo keyboard. Futu, Futo. Oh, man. Yeah, I think Plenty of ways to say it wrong. <laughs> yeah. I love a word like that. And of course, for a slice of pie. Yeah. Something with a e ink flavor. Something uh-huh. that it, it's the TSA acceptance factor <laughs> razor blade. Like, yes. maybe, maybe you could get that through. But <laughs> before we get started, we'd like to catch up, see what's going on since last week. And Jill, you uh, you you've been single-handedly funding <laughs> Valve, have you? Not? I, I I sure have. I you know I've picked up a lot of games in the Steam Summer Sale that I've been wanting, but I've been working so much I haven't had a chance to play them. So, but I did grab a Dream Swing, which is a a, a fun swinging 3D platform um, that I saw the uh, cinematic from, and that looks like a lot of fun. And Lil- Lily's Sky Arc, that was one that uh, Ven and Pedro and Jordan had reviewed quite a while ago. That was intriguing to me that I've been wanting. <laughs> and then uh, there's one called Alucinod, A-L-U-C-I-N-O-D, which is a really fun looking M.C. Escher-like first person puzzler. And I love games like that. So, but I am looking forward to playing them all over the 4th of July holiday here in the U.S. So we got a big, nice, long weekend, and I want to play some games. <laughs> oh, that sounds fun. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about something that I thought was quite interesting. I do a site, I do a whole project called Interfacing Linux. You know, it is uh, audio video content creation for creatives that just happen to run Linux. Love audio interfaces. And I saw everybody's uh, favorite little um, animated uh, avatar person. Uh, what is it? Asahi. Uh, Asahi Lina. <laughs> they were working on reverse engineering an RME Digiface yeah. USB, which is one of the rare devices from RME. Now, it uses ADAT. You see all those little ports there. If you're watching the video version, if you're unfamiliar with that, think like the spit of optical cable like that, but you can send mm. a bunch of them. Um, you can send uh, eight channels each way through those and um this is one of those rare devices that do not support linux out of the box armies like just not opened it up they're doing a just complete reverse engineering and i love this this makes me so happy um they're working on it the prototype control app is kind of hacky direct usb access they're just digging through it they fixed implicit sync just mm, love to see this why because i bring this up as a warning to every hardware manufacturer, in the sound of my voice, both of you, mm-hmm. I don't know, not releasing Linux drivers for your product is the quickest, most guaranteedest way to get your product reverse engineered. There is a <laughs> long, proud history of that. So, something to think about. Something to think about. It was just a matter of time before somebody picked this up. And what happens? You're like, I run Linux. This doesn't work on Linux. Those two things align, and then you got the person's like, I can make this run on Linux. Oh, sit back, relax, love to see it, makes me happy. But let's get into the news, everybody. Because we got a new browser that we've talked about. I talked about this guy, oh, I think all the way back in 2022. Ladybird had started as a component of Serenity OS. Remember that little hobby project? If you're wondering, if you start looking at the code and you're like, this is a big old ball of C++, that's why. That was a thing at that time. It's since split off to become its own standalone browser. And I I, I liked it way back when, and, you know, way back when, two years ago. No default search deals, no crypto tokens, no forms of, like, user monetization ever. That, that's a strong selling point. And it is funded entirely by sponsorships and donations from companies and individuals like you at home. So why do we need another option for web browsers? This is a good question. I was thinking about this earlier today. Okay, to put this simply, 
We need a browser that's not owned by a corporation or almost entirely funded by one. Mozilla, right? Let's think about that. They expect the first yeah. alpha for this to launch, quite unfortunately, because <laughs> I'm impatient, in 2026. <laughs> But yeah. until then, everybody, if you want to mess with a Ladybird browser, you can build it from source. Welcome to Linux. Learn how to do it. It's not that hard. And not just for my Linux brothers and sisters, there's build instructions in the repo for Haiku. So you know they're serious so cool. Joe Bryant. Yeah, they, they are. And then having, you know, they actually have the ex-CEO and co-founder of GitHub, Chris Wanstrath. He's, he donated a million dollars and is on the board of directors. Um, that really shows you how committed they are to bringing a new web browser to the market. This, this is really huge. And they also created a Ladybird browser initiative. It's a U.S. 501c3 nonprofit uh, to work on their browser and get sponsors. So lots of movement and action here and lots of funding, which is a really good thing. It's really awesome. <laughs> yeah, I remember Ven. We, we, uh, I, 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 we were talking about before the show. I think you had compiled it uh, to show it off on the show, but mm -hmm. I, we we couldn't remember. And I, I do remember compiling it myself, but I don't remember if it got shown off during the show. <laughs> I built it. Uh, I think I built it. This is you know again in ancient history, all those years ago, and yeah. Uh, it, you know, it was like what you would expect. You're like, well, it, it kind of loaded a web page. I'm like, that's a start. That's a start. Yeah. It, we got to start somewhere. And people say this, so, you know, they were looking at that a couple of years ago. I remember talking about a couple of years ago. I'm like, let's see where it goes. Still got a long ways to go, though. And the common complaint, the detractors, the not good enough, the uh, do nothings on the internet are constantly saying that building a modern web browser with a small, dedicated team of individuals, completely mm -hmm. impossible. Can't be done. Can't be done. Don't even waste your time. Why would you be so silly? And I like to remind people about this word impossible. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> to myself, and I think a lot of people working on the Ladybird project, here's an e easy way to frame impossible. Think of it like this. Impossible is just a challenge with just, you know, a couple of extra steps tossed in to make things interesting. That's how you should approach impossible you shouldn't bounce off of it give it a try and find out whether or not it really is and that's what they're doing very much respect that also everyone um at ladybird project i'm gonna need you to do something for old man ven mm -hmm. bring back the blink tag <laughs> yeah <laughs> or you're dead to me okay <laughs> now what i'm curious about do you listening at home have room in your heart Hmm. room in your lives for another web browser do you think about it or do you even care because i'm thinking maybe we're due another firefox moment yes maybe you weren't around we were stuck <laughs> we, we had poor little netscape four or five or whatever amalgam it had turned into by the time and we had ie6 and neither were that great of an option firefox started up did the thing then firefox got Firefox and this other little startup. Well, it weren't really a startup at the time, but that browser sure was. Chrome showed up and it started dancing around Firefox. I think it's we're about at that point where we could use another one of those moments where the new thing yeah. shows up and everyone goes, oh no, we got to jump around. Because what I said earlier, what are browsers these days? Chrome, it's just a data hoovering device. I mean, if you're okay making that deal, I still use Chrome, but I use Firefox. I use Vivaldi. I use, uh, I don't think I use Brave, but I definitely have Vivaldi and Chromium. I, I, I tend to bounce around. Um, I've already made that Faustian deal with Google way back in the long time ago, man. So, uh, and we've talked about it on this show. You know, Firefox is definitely, we've watched them start sticking that pinky toe into like mm -hmm. sketchiness and we're like mm, just, 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 just go back to doing the browser man come on just, yeah. just just stick with the browser and do that so they're gonna take this take they're gonna do the wild brave ambitious thing getting that small team together and build a browser i think it's completely possible despite any naysaying but who knows 2026 will tell us what we need to know um i'm gonna go through the documentation i'm gonna go ahead and probably get a build up and running 
and just play around with it. How about you, Joel? Are, are you yeah. looking forward to, do you have room yes, in absolutely. your heart for another browser? I mean, there's also WebKit. I know somebody's going to type in the comments on YouTube, like, you forgot about WebKit. No, I didn't see. Ha, deal with it. Yeah. And there's Gnome Web and there, there's a few other in, independent browsers out there, but we need a, ma a new major player. That is for sure. We, you know, we have the open source Firefox and we have the closed source uh, Chromium base. And now we need another option. <laughs> This is good for everybody. Maybe that'll get Mozilla Foundation like refocused on like, hey, we, we showed up to the party to bring you a browser. Let's get back to that. Yeah. Back and Chrome will go, maybe we should. I don't know. You know what? Google's just going to do whatever Google does. Yeah. Let's just give that up. Yeah. So, and <laughs> then you get things like, you know, Vivaldi. I don't know what's going on there. I'm not. Uh, then you got Brave with the crypto stuff going on in it. Like just an open source, modern browser. Just a small team making a great browser. That, yeah. That, why is that, that such a foreign awesome. concept? Like I'm thinking about it. Like why? Why not do it? Do it. Love it. I saw the announcement on YouTube. Dude made a YouTube video. If you need help with like AV production or anything under Linux, that's kind of my gem because it, it was looking mm. a little scuffed. Uh, hit me up. I'd be glad to help for free. Um, one of the things I like to do. Now, mm -hmm. canonical. They're tired of this distro thing, Jill. They don't like it anymore. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to get rid of distros. We're just going to go <laughs> distroless, and it's uh, going to be naughty. Oh, uh, actually, <laughs> this is something uh, major and a major change for canonical. The makers of Ubuntu Linux, you know, they just made a big announcement with something cool called Everything LTS. Now, Everything LTS is a new initiative where Ubuntu Pro customers get up to 12 years of long term service for any open source Docker image. These are distro list Docker images, which are custom built and can include upstream software not found in Ubuntu. And there is also support by Canonical to fix critical CVEs within 24 hours. So that's awesome. One of the huge things here about everything LTS is that this support includes Docker images on RHEL, Ubuntu, VMware, and public cloud K8 instances. It's not just Ubuntu. And yeah, it, it's <laughs> actually really game-changing. In fact, uh, Stephen Von Nichols from ZDNet states, with these new open container initiative images, Canonical is embracing the distroless container paradigm in which images contain just enough of the operating system and software to run a specific application. These hardened, minimal containers have a reduced attack surface, making them more secure than conventional Linux VMs or containers. And honestly, Ven, when I, when I first read about this announcement, I couldn't help but think about, you know, all the years the uh, me and you and the Linux community and, and companies have been using small Linux distros on CDs and later USBs for specific needs. And to me, this is the next evolution of that. Yeah, I was, I was pretty blow, blown away by this. I, I, I think that is really cool that they're supporting all these different um, Docker images. <laughs> they want a taste of the Red Hat money. Yeah. yeah. Everybody does. You know, we talked about, I don't know if we talked about it on the show. Yeah, we did. Uh, Susie going to like 19 year support cycles. Yes, and that was last week. Like all yeah. types of crazy things. Like this, this is outside of my wheelhouse. Like what, what I hear like Docker containers. And I was like, I am so glad I pieced <laughs> out of the industry before that rolled around. Um, kind of, there's still part of me like, yeah, I probably won't want to play with it. But, you know, there's argument to be made. Like, you know, I gripe and moan about containerized applications, but like running your operating system, like or a service in a container makes perfect sense to me. Like on paper so there you go good job canonical mm -hmm. hopefully uh that'll make it easier you know to stay compliant with things you know if you're running like government whatnots yeah. and you got to do this and it's got to be this exact that's a good way to have that static thing rolling on now <laughs> what a lot of you were here for hi you've skipped to this point <laughs> of the video didn't you yeah you did <laughs> let's talk about futo android keyboard but before yeah. we do that do you even know what Android keyboard you use? Probably not. No idea. You like I used the one that came with the phone. Maybe it's Google keyboard. Maybe it's one that came with Samsung. Maybe it's like whatever. You're like, it's, it's a keyboard, Vin. Why do I care? Let me tell you why you should care. Because <laughs> if you don't know what keyboard you're running, there's a good chance that everything that you're typing into your keyboard is getting sent off somewhere. You know, would you buy one of these? 
keyboards. See, this is my keyboard. Look at that. And oh, by the way, you see that? That's from cleaning. That's not scuffs. That's where yeah. I cleaned it to <laughs> the clean. point. Why? Because Microsoft in their infinite wisdom did not make that detachable. So I have to like spray it down and scrub it. Now, would you buy one of those keyboards if I had an Ethernet jack on the side that just sent your key out? That's a key logger. Mm -hmm. A lot of mm -hmm. these things do that and you don't know about it. And you know, Gboard and stuff like that. What do you care? It's a keyboard. You should care about stuff like this. And a couple of weeks ago, I told everyone about Helioboard because I ran across it. I've always been on the lookout for something. I like G Gboard, even the Edge keyboard. They're good mm -hmm. keyboards, but they're chonky and they're data <laughs> vacuuming Slow. devices yeah. that I'm just like, oh, no. Uh -uh. And I don't even type anything sketchy, but I'm like, I don't want to send my stuff to like wherever. So been looking out and I ran into Helioboard and it's really neat. You know, it's customizable open source keyboard. And what got me, what sold me, was if you were willing to install the Android library, it worked with glide typing, which is a must for me because I carry around a tablet. I don't carry around a laptop. And I need that because I don't hold a tablet like a mobile phone because mm. that looks ridiculous. Then we get this. It's a great time for everybody. The Futo organization has released. Now, this is an alpha mm -hmm. Futo keyboard. I mean, you're not going to get confused. You know, don't, don't waste time with naming. What is it? Futo or keyboard. Done. Like Helioboard. It's 100% offline, security focused, and it was started by the gentleman behind Yahoo Games. Thank you for many games of pool. I played the snot <laughs> out of that oh. client-side Java application. Yeah. I absolutely did. He's funded development for uh, OSS software like GIMP, Asahi, VLC, PeerTube, and this Futo keyboard. I mean, it's based on AOSP, so if my brothers and sisters I like custom ROMs, you know that name, you're familiar with it, with some extra bits thrown in. Now, this is where people start getting squirrely because it's licensed under the Futu, Futu, Futo. Oh man, come on guys. <laughs> I'm going to mispronounce this on purpose, but I got to find the one I like. Source yeah. first license 1.0. And that has caused some confusion slash screeching on the internet. You know, the internet went full internet on this. And you know, all right, I get it though, because by the letter of the law, you know, it means that the keyboard's not really open source. It's more like source available minus any crazy restrictions so that you can modify and share source. You can even redistribute it for non-commercial purposes. But if you're a large organization, they got to get paid. I like that. I, I like that. I'm not against that at all. You know, I, you can think of the Futu, Futo source license as an alternative to closed source licensing. You know, you buy commercial software, you don't get to take a peek under the hood and make sure it's legit. You can do that with this. I think that's right. Because, you know, immediately when I read that and I'm like, you guys are trying to redefine open source. They're not. They're not. I think they, they've made a video and like, our bad. And I'm like, all right, easy, easy, to, easy mistake to make. I made that mistake probably like five years ago when the Epic Unreal Engine went open source. I'm like, yeah, it went open source. Tsunami hit me of like, no source available i'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I, I know that i said open source for the they're like ah i'm like fine you know what i'm not arguing semantics on the internet it's not semantics it's like you know what you even have a point there but you know what i meant calm down don't get caught in the weeds on this the keyboard's completely free there is a one-time payment and right before the show you know you don't you just download it it's an f droid it's on the play store uh, there's a repo for it grab it wherever you need it but if you want to help the funding we got this. Help keep it running, man. People got to get paid for their work, which I think is good. You know, a small, dedicated team, and they're not taking your data, not doing anything. I'm like, okay, no, no subscriptions or anything. I'm going to pay for it. So I click on the button, and I'm like, I don't know what Gray J is, but I'm going to go to the keyboard thing. This is where you drop the mm -hmm. ball right here. Listen to my words right here. Because I don't know how much. I don't know. I want to kick you some coin, but you're asking for an email address before you're going to tell me the price. Y'all need to fix that. You do. Because intended or not, that comes across as sketchy. It does. People are going to bounce off that and have bounced off that hard, full stop, as you like to say. There's that. So give me a price up there before I give you an email address. Then we'll make that exchange. Like, we'll, we'll go hang out in the back alley and we'll make it happen. I'll be happy to fund, you know, and kick you some coin. As long as it's not like a bazillion dollars. I'm not rich. There it is. I've been using it for... Two days now on my, I didn't put it on the S6. I put it on my Galaxy S6 Lite tablet. Oh, okay. 
no problems with it. Easy to install. I installed, I tried to install it through F-Droid and it didn't want to sync up for whatever reason. I didn't, I saw it was on Play Store, so I hit Play Store button, it just installed. It's a little chunky, but it's got a lot more in it, uh, you know, because it's got the voice, Jill will tell you about the voice stuff. Um, and Helio board, it's about 100 megs to download. No complaints. Glide typing's working. Predictions, well enough. It's, it's a good keyboard, and you know that you can audit the code. That That's your selling point right there. You know what's taking place under the hood. Yeah. Or you can just download the APK yourself and install it inside of a piece of I, I know it's a keyboard, so you're yeah. going to investigate yeah, the critical yeah. parts yeah. of it, like <laughs> emoji support. Yes, I, I will. So I actually love the security of the offline voice input where no data is collected or stored on the Futo keyboard. In fact, something really cool, they even have a separate Futo voice input app that you can download and use, and it works with other keyboards that are compatible. It actually let me know when I launched it that uh, Gboard, which I was using at the time, is not compatible because Gboard has its own voice typing system, and that's true for several other keyboards. But it was compatible with one of my other favorite keyboards I use, which is the Emoji keyboard. <laughs> I do like a, a good use of emoji, and uh, Futo has that as well. <laughs> I like it. It's good. It's light. It's easier if you're just looking for like glide typing, emoji support, voice support, and they got their own like, you know, on device prediction. Yeah. And plenty of options to play around with. So, like, try it out. If you're the type of person who's like, okay, maybe you just learned something. Yeah, you, the keyboard that's built into whatever device you have is probably sitting all your data off somewhere, man. For good or for ill, it just is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if you don't like that, or you know, I again knowing full well that the G board was doing that, I'm like, but it's so mm -hmm. nice once it loads because it's a chunky, slow load, it is, even yeah. on an S6, which is not a low end uh, tablet by any stretch of the imagination. So this this pops right up. Didn't have a problem with it. I didn't try it on anything like budget. I was going to put it on this uh, Amazon Fire tablet here in the studio, but. It's got a spicy battery right now. Mm. Oh, I don't want to mm. deal with that until I pull it apart and fix it. Yeah, good work, everybody. There'll be a link in the show notes if you're just looking for it. Uh, Futo. Yeah. Futo.org. No, <laughs> keyboard.futo. Futo. <laughs> Futo.org. I like the name. See, it's hard to say, but I look, look, LWDW. You can even say our last yeah. week later. Yeah, right? Everyone's like, what does that mean? Right. <laughs> it actually stands for something. I'm sure Futo. Yeah. Futo stands for something. I'm going to say it twice no matter what. My brain's like, even though I say it one way, it's like, say it the other way. Just cover your bases. <laughs> there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of things that we couldn't come up with a way to uh, gracefully say, uh, yeah, Jill and exactly. I were talking about that in the uh, pre-pre-show. Go back and listen to that if you're a patron. Uh, yeah, how, how are we going to pronounce this one, Jill? Okay, so e -I -E -I -Pod? this is... <laughs> Epipod. <laughs> <laughs> e -pi -pi. I think it's e -pi -pod, <laughs> not EpiPod. <laughs> I just thought of that. So anyways, this is actually, to me, a, the perfect use of an e-ink screen and, and a Raspberry Pi. A hand-built homebrew iPad clone. And yes, it's called e -pi -pod. <laughs> And it's powered by a Raspberry Pi 02W. The e -pi -pod boasts up to five hours of battery life per charge and has an e-paper display that is readable in sunlight. The e-paper screen is an electro 250 by 122 resolution display, which offers low power draw and, like I said earlier, is fully readable in the sun. But it might not be so easy to read in the dark. <laughs> so that'll be a thing. Maybe there'll be a uh, a future e-paper display with an LCD on the back <laughs> that you can pop in there. Uh, there's a dedicated 24-bit 12S digital to analog converter through a headphone amplifier for the audio. And you can actually get the PCB from the PCBWay website. I wasn't able to see the price because I have to create an account and, and log in to get the prices. And years ago, I had used this site, but I... I couldn't remember my login credentials. <laughs> so I need to go through and do that again. But I'm suspecting that it's not too expensive. This is what I was talking about earlier in the show. Like, eh, look at it. Look at it. See if you if you, Isn't it cute? If you had to if you sir, if you had to take that out of your pocket and put it through the scanner, you could probably get it through the TSA. So I'm gonna give this a TSA 
scale neutral rating. Like I'm yeah. saying there's a chance. <laughs> I'm saying there's a chance. You're like, it's, it's, we have iPod at home. They'll be like, okay, fine. I like the idea of eating, <laughs> but it's one of those devices where you're going to have to, hey, hey kids, we used to have these things called TV remotes, right? Mm-hmm. Believe it or not. And we had to change channels. We did, couldn't do it on our um, mobile device. Yeah. And uh, they didn't have backlights on them. So you had to memorize that remote. Because you yes. couldn't look at the remote all the time. You had to be hold the remote like this right here where you weren't thinking about it and like changing channels, yeah. muting, <laughs> doing whatever and like changing satellites. I could do all the, you know, with big crazy remotes. And uh, you got to keep that in mind when you're dealing with the ink in the dark, right? Unless you got to yeah. break out a light. So you got to, you'd have to establish that memory pattern and be like, all right, how do I, you know, yeah. click through to get to that thing? And like, all right, got it done. <laughs> yeah, you could probably build something like this for, oh, I don't know. I, I'd be surprised if it was over 100 quid. Yeah, but me too. I'm looking at this LiPo battery. You know, it's got that Raspberry Pi Zero. Was it a Zero Two W or yeah, Zero Two W? Yeah, right on. And uh, a 1200 milliamp uh, LiPo that looks way too easy to replace. That would make Apple very upset if they saw it. Yes, that. I, absolutely. You're, you're, you're going to need to glue that in <laughs> a little bit better. There we go. All right, everybody, we did it. Ran a little bit long, but not not too yeah. bad. Hey, I hope you like the show. If you do like the show, you get some value, some entertainment from it. Kick us some coin. You can support us. We don't have ads. We don't have any data tracking. You can just download the podcast direct from Old Man Ven. Like there, there's no Podbeam or whatever getting your data bits. It's just straight from my cloud instance, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Come get this show and a couple of other things like you get the live and uncut version of the show. If you can't make the live and you want that live experience, we give you that in MP3 plus a video on YouTube. I give you a commercial free version of this show. So it's not even on YouTube. It's something that you can watch right in the browser, download, save wherever you want to do. I make that as a bonus, you know, just as a thank you for helping us out. Buck a week, whatever you got Mm. going on, we'd appreciate it. Come hop into our Discord. We're not going to like, hey, you got to come talk to us on our Discord, but we do have a Discord. We got a very eclectic group of people in there and it's not all hard Linux and it's a very active discord. (laughs) It puts the other discords to shame. There is just, we're rocking and rolling all over the place and it's definitely a good time. I get together on Tuesdays and Fridays. If you're looking to do a little bit of gaming, you you need to keep those finger digits. I saw Turbo in chat a little bit earlier. He's one of our patrons. Yeah. We do Track Mania too. It's like <laughs> 999. It's probably on sale right now. It's a racing puzzle physics platform where we get together in Discord. We have a great chat. We even stream it so, you know, other people can see how cool we are and how good we've gotten. We call ourselves the filthy casuals because we're not all that great. <laughs> it's not about winning. It's about hanging out and building the skills, staying active. So if you've yeah. been looking for that group of friends, you know, you used to have that in your 20s. You know, in your teens, you're like, hey, you know, a scheduled thing. We get together on Tuesdays and we get together on Fridays later for people who can't make the Tuesdays. There it is. We got you covered. Friendly people. Love to have you in. Um, all of that's pinned to Trackmanias and in Discord. If you want to get into it, and you can also hop in there with your Twitch sub. Love to see ya. There we go. Uh, we got Libra Pay, PayPal, and of course, the magic internet money and amazon wish list if you want to buy something Yay. you know we're just like hey you want to get us a present mm-hmm. that's cool you know what you get us a present we'll read something off you know send in a note i'll be like i can't read that you <laughs> built the animal and we'll have to throw it away it'll be brilliant <laughs> hey thanks for watching uh let us know what you think in the comments and we'll catch you next week yeah let's do the bouncing Aww. music joe let's do that Gamatron, thank you for the 31 month resub <laughs> on Twitch. Yay, actually on, on Patreon. <laughs> and thank you to our advisor, Illegal Lee Blind, who's also known as Artharon in chat. And and he's the one who helped us with that Ladybird announcement. He he posted that in our Discord. And that's how we found out <laughs> all this good news about Ladybird. So thank you, Artharon. Thank you to our Death Notes, our, our all our different levels, our Chairlings, our Sea Monsters. We have lots of wonderful patrons. <laughs> I keep telling you, Jill, Sea Monsters don't need chairs. They got no legs. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, they are. <laughs> Tentacle creatures. They got flippers. Yeah. <laughs> if you see a sea monster with tentacles, please consult your doctor. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next week, everybody. Bye, everyone. Love you all.